How's it going, folks? K1GMM, Kilo One Golf, Mike, Mike, Steve, Vermont, with a whole lot of hacking and quacking going on. I am going to show you exactly what I did with the 75 80 meter phase dipole array and how I got it running. In theory, it probably shouldn't work, but it does, and it works really freaking good. Um, I'll give you the complete specs for it. Uh, what's required uh, but before we get into that what I'll do is I'll play you a clip I worked a couple stations Hannes and I think it was Neil in the UK I've been making contacts barefoot with this thing on 80 meters across the pond like like nothing it hands down the best antenna I've ever had on uh, 75 80 meters and really tremendous front to back and it seems like it's got great gain as well very simple so, uh, well, it's more complicated than just throwing up a single dipole, but still pretty simple. I'll give you the element links, all the specs on it. Uh, but let me roll this clip quick, and then I'll be back. Give me another quick over. I'll give you an accurate report. Thank you for the 5-9. Uh, Golf Mike 6, Mike Charlie, Kilo 1 Golf Mike. Mike, go ahead. Okay, thank you. I'm testing out a new antenna here. It's a phased uh, dipole array. Uh, so very good. Uh, and I'm barefoot, 100 watts on the button. Thank you very much. Uh, keep things moving along here. Uh, 7 3, good to hear you. A nice signal, 5 9 plus 5 plus 10. Uh, no problem. Uh, GM6 MC, K1 GMM, over. Okay, uh, so there you go, uh, 100 watts on the button, 5.9, they were plus 5, plus 10, I know they're running power, and uh, that's been the consistent, um, the consistent situation here uh, the past few nights. I did spend uh, two nights ago, I finished tuning it in a snowstorm, <laughs> uh, put a whole new phasing line in. Uh, so let me get the picture up on the screen and uh, let's see if I scrounge this up here. So, okay. So this is basically what I've got going. If you look at the Chrisman phasing calculator, this is not even close to what it's suggesting. Now, the problem I had was is at the height of the antenna, it's about 50 feet points are about 50 feet off the ground. And it was difficult with a recommended feed, uh, uh, feed line length suggested in the calculator to, basically I would have to mount the switch up in the air, the, the relay, or mount it at one of the feed points and I wasn't willing to do that. I may change everything over in the future, but like I always say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this thing's working very well. So uh, each element I have cut, I wanted it as broadbanded as possible, and I wanted it to be able to work fairly well in the FT8 portion, um, the digital area. And as you know, stateside here, the 75, 80 meter band is very large. A huge band not as big as 10 but it's pretty big so uh, I wanted it to to load up and be fairly reasonable from 4 megs all the way to uh, down to 3.5 so now front to back does suffer a little bit once you move off the kill out of the kill box 
Uh, I kind of wanted it to be as good as I can get it in the 3.7 range, 3.75. The DX window is 3.79 to 3.8. And so I wanted it pretty good in that area. Seems to be working really well. So let's go over really quick what I've got here. Each element length is cut for 138 feet. Uh, the spacing is only 43 feet. It's not a, a wide spaced uh, beam, so to speak. Height above ground is roughly 50 feet plus. Uh, feed lines are 76.5 feet of 75 ohm quad shield RG6U from Home Depot. Now you can pick this stuff up uh, pretty cheap. It's not great coax. I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, you know, my advice, if you want to do it right, pick up some good RG11, some high-grade RG11 if you're going to run legal limit in it. But, pff, I, you know, uh, I don't really care. Maybe at some point I'll do that. Uh, the phasing line, which is right here, this is what a lot of people call a delay line. Uh, in this type of a system, you have to do some reading on it, and I don't have a picture. But basically, you're sending uh, on the relay, the center pin and shield come in for one side of the relay, center pin and shield come in for the other side of the relay, for the other element, right? And the relay switches back and forth, switching between the two elements. Now, to create the loading necessary to make, and now keep in mind, these elements are the same length, each one. So you want to turn one into a reflector, right? And this is strictly layman's terms. Uh, there's not a lot of science here, but this will give you an understanding of exactly what's going on. So when this relay, let's say this element right here is active and the relay is switched into this element. So it's connected to this element. Now you have another piece of coax, which you bring the center pin and shield common to this element on that side of the relay. And that goes around to the other side but when the relay flips and it goes to this one this goes open so basically what happens is you create this length of coax and this is just strictly in, if you were to picture it becomes longer so it creates it changes the the impedance changes the current in the antenna system and it basically makes that parasitic element, that element goes parasitic and makes it look electrically longer than it physically is, turning it into a reflector. That if you want to know how it works, you know, without going into ridiculous math and science and everybody can sit there and go, ooh and ah, that's basically all you're doing. Um, now, the way I have this set up, I have no idea how, what the current looks like. All I know is that I've got 15 to 20 dB front to back on this bad boy. And it has substantial forward gain in the direction I want. This was pointed right at those guys in Europe. Not right at them, but about 53 degrees, which is exactly where I need to be pointed. And I found that stations all over in that area from Italy, Germany, north. Uh, when I flip it, I've got about 15 15 db solid front to back um, and when i flipped it i was working a station the night before i said well can i test it and i flipped it he said i went from an s9 to into the noise floor completely disappeared so that was my goal to have more forward gain than front to back i was kind of going for the gain i really didn't care that much about the front to back but that's, that's actually more gain than I have on front to back on receive, which is exactly where I want it. So I figured I'd share this with you guys. Uh, this phasing line right here, same stuff. Uh, RG6U quad shield, 75 ohm, 89.5 feet. Uh, and this will give you enough loading on the parasitic element to basically make it work. Uh, that's it. I think I covered everything here. Uh, it's fairly compact. Uh, you would need, basically, if you can hang an 80-meter dipole and you have at least, I would say, 50 feet of space on each side of the dipole, you could hang something like this and have a substantial upgrade. 50 feet is not a lot. If you've got enough room for uh, 
a, a, just a single 80 meter dipole well take a look if you've got 50 feet heck uh you could slam something like this up very easy antenna to construct basically just wire uh the coax is the most expensive part the dpdt relay is 16 bucks and i'll put a link in the description Anywho, short and sweet, that's it. Uh, seven three. have a good day. I'll probably be back doing some 20 meter. Um, I've been listening on 20, and the band has got some very sharp QSB on it, but uh, we may take a, take a run in there. Uh, be back on a live stream. We'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. Much appreciated. As an ending sidebar, you can... I don't care if you subscribe to the channel. I'm not monetized, doesn't matter to me. However, if you want to be notified of anything coming, uh, live streams, stuff like that, go ahead and subscribe and click the little bell icon on the channel and you'll be notified uh, when, I usually I post notifications if I know I'm going to stream. Sometimes it's off the cuff and it just goes live, but you will be notified. 7-3, catch you later.